Yeah, and welcome, welcome, welcome once again. We brought uh, Justin back. Oh, Strander. Oh. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna do some uh, some pop ditties this time. Could, yeah. Is, is, could this be any kind of pop, or just is this more like country pop? Um, I don't know. I think there's a little bit of mystery as to how pop music and country music work together and what that means for session players. Yes. So, uh, you know, I put a little thing together that is basically a loop mm -hmm. that has a few rural instruments yeah. and a chord progression, and we're just playing some parts together that make a song. And you can imagine somebody singing over it. Yeah. And it's just kind of a glimpse into how does what I do interface with, you know, the kid making beats on his laptop. Yeah, yeah and, right, you know, right. When they bring a guitar player in, what are they expecting? Yeah. You know, how, how does that work? So. Sweet. Well, I'm going to leave all of Justin's links down below. Make sure you check them out. Did, did you ever, did, did you YouTube yet or what? Instagram something? Um, well, we've got that other yes! video okay. out. <laughs> <laughs> Look for that too. I'll put the link. We did another video as well. I'm going to put that down in the description box. So make sure you check that out. And then also, he does have a YouTube channel, so subscribe to that. There will be something there eventually, right? Yes. Yes. Sweet. Absolutely. All right. And then make sure to subscribe and click the bell to be notified when the new videos come out. So, cool. you're not using a whole lot of stuff. You got your mm -hmm. little Lazy J. What, what is yeah. this supposed to be? Uh, it's a Tweed Deluxe. Tweed Deluxe, okay. So It's a little deluxe. different. It's like his take on one. It sounds really freaking good. I'm a really big fan of it. Yeah. I'm so, like... Hmm. Kenny Greenberg hit me to it. Yes. Well, Kenny knows. Thanks, Kenny. Okay, and then any effects going down? Yeah, um, I basically have this reverb on from the, the line six that is a... Uh, Ooh. It's kind of a long mm -hmm. tank. Actually, the patch, if you all have a, an HX, it's called the double tank. Okay, so, so that's line six HX effects. Yeah. They're awesome. So I've got that verb on. And then I use their version of a space echo okay. on, on this track. Uh, my intro part is basically those two things um, ringing out. And you can kind of hear it sort oh, of yeah. bouncing and floating yeah, yeah. off into the ether. Nice. So and That's straight into your amp. Straight in, yeah. Okay. And cool. then, yes, I do have the mini nobles on. Oh, just, just a touch. Yeah. Is your volume all the way up on your guitar? Yes. Okay. Yes, uh, my middle. tone's backed off. I usually leave my tone around seven or eight. Interesting. Why? On most fenders. It just takes some of the real high sheen. Yeah. Like, especially when I dig in, I don't want to hear excess bright brightness. Yeah, exactly. Totally. Exactly. <laughs> okay, so middle pickup, is that what you're... Yeah, yeah, both, both pick up, pickups active. Okay. Now, how do you make all these choices? Oh, goodness. Very quickly? Yeah. Is that kind of what it boils down to? What's that yeah. guy using? Okay, I'm not gonna use the same thing. Yeah, yeah. So your part, um, you're you're playing a strat, mm -hmm. and it's it's nice and bright mm -hmm. and chimey, even though it's on the the neck pickup. I think is yeah, right. yeah, yeah. But uh, so I'm playing something that's a little warmer. Okay. It's a Fender as well, but yeah, the, these just I'm in love with this guitar. It's, it's a good guitar. It's got the it's got the snap of a Fender, but everything mm -hmm. just sounds kind of bigger. Yeah. Even though when you get up here. A lot of the notes don't ring out really well because there's almost zero angle on the bridge. Okay, got it. So if you're one of those guys who wants to like bend a note and for it to just last yeah. for eternity, yeah. like you know, <laughs> like a Les Paul or something. For distortion pedals for this is not going to do that. Yeah. So I, I like that though. I like picking up a guitar and making and it changing the way that I play. Yeah. You know. Right. I'm not looking for every guitar to do the same thing. No, for sure. Okay, so part-wise, what, what have we got? You you created the part, and you actually play it better. Yeah, so. yeah. So your your part, um, it's just this simple chord thing that that has the the open G ringing out through the whole thing. So I'm just going uh, C to G, D, E minor. Mm -hmm. And then over that, and that could be the backbone of the song. Yeah. Like often I, I'll get a work tape where it's just, you know, the song, like it say this song were something that somebody had written with actual lyrics and yeah. brought it to a session. It's probably, it would probably be an acoustic. I think that sounds good. Yeah, it's a great sounding guitar. Anyway. <laughs> you know, you hear some version of that, yeah. or maybe the maybe the uh, the writer is a little more adventurous of a guitar player, and mm -hmm. they have, while they're not singing, they actually have that part played yeah. in there. 
you know. And we we kind of make fun of this a little bit in okay. Nashville, the, the tense thing, because it's yeah. kind of it's kind of been used a lot. Right. But I, I wanted to have something that's somewhat familiar. Yeah, familiar. As an yeah, example. Yeah. So. It has been used a bunch, but it's effective. Yeah. In its simplicity. Absolutely. So is it basically a, a root and a third? Is that what it yeah, was? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So C and the third E. And that's actually a full C triad. Yeah, because you got the open. And then we're G, B, with those two notes being the same. And then here, I love the half step, mm -hmm. the little rub that mm -hmm. happens there. Um, a lot of people used to at least kind of go, make it a D chord. That would be a D chord. Mm -hmm. Root, fifth, third. But really we're playing root, fourth, and then the third yeah. on the top. Sounds so it's got, it's got the both. It's a sus and a triad, you mm -hmm. know? Um, and then the next chord would be just E minor, which is E, G, and G. So. Okay, so when you hear that and you're the second guitar player, where does that come into play? Like, when do you start thinking like, Well, oh, okay. like we talked about in the last one, um, the intro part, uh, it's just you by yourself. Mm -hmm. But then when I come in, like I'm thinking of something simple and melodic that someone could sing. Okay. Or that's hooky, right? Yeah. We're always looking for the hook. Mm -hmm. So uh, my hook over that, um, do you want to play that part? Yeah. Part? So do you do you hit the effects and stuff like that to, to kind of create that space since my part's already kind of dry? Or like, is that kind of a thing going on in your head or? Yes. Okay. Yeah. On, on the pop side of things, there's such few things happening you yeah. know it's not like a seven piece country band with two right. electrics steel fiddle acoustic. bass drums keys, keys. acoustic <laughs> you know so there's room for you to put a lot of space around what you're doing okay in terms of effects yeah all right so here we go just works. So do you, is there, are you seeing like, are you playing out of chord shapes or how do you pick those melodies? Man, at this point, it's just what pops into my head. Yeah. And I kind of know where to go for it. But what, what is that just in case? Because some people, you know, they don't, <clears throat> obviously. Absolutely. <laughs> so I'm starting on a D and I slide up. And then I do a hammer on it. Yeah. So it's like, it's almost like I'm super indecisive. Yeah. Should I slide or should I hammer? <laughs> Why not both? <laughs> exactly. So I'm, and I'm oh, landing yeah. on a B note. Yeah. And that sounds different than. Mm -hmm. Different enough. Like it's this this note is darker mm -hmm. than the open string. Plus you can vibrato it. Yeah. Well, you, well, you could part. do yeah. You could do either one, but um, but back to the idea of, of having some warm mm -hmm. vibe. Yeah. You know. Well, and you are playing right out of the C chord. Exactly. Yeah. And I land on the third of our key. And that G. gets to. Well, that it lands with your G chord. So we got. We yeah. land on that together. And then once you get here. I'm just hanging it and letting it be tension over, okay. the, over the D chord. Oh, cool, okay. More tension. I mean, you could you could take it anywhere with conviction. Yeah. You know, like keep keep playing that. Okay. I'll just land on different notes and okay. it's just different colors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two, three, four. Just more movement. We play out of the G. Yeah, so instead of uh, getting to the two down here, I'm going up here. 
I like how all those um, sounds start to run together with the, with the echo and the reverb. Yeah. It almost creates like a, a keyboard. Yeah, yeah. It's got a, it's got a, almost a pad behind it. Yeah, <laughs> in exactly. A way. Yeah. Okay, so um, as the song picks up, how do, you, how do you like take it from there so it moves? Well, um, so your part's pretty, pretty static. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just played that one thing twice. <laughs> for my, my introduction. Mm -hmm. And then the track kind of takes a breath mm -hmm. and settles and there's some acoustics just going. Just over all those changes. Mm -hmm. So it's just more vibe, right? Yeah. It's nothing that's getting in the way of any other melody. Okay. You know, cause it's, it doesn't have a ton of movement. Um, but then when the band kicks in, I went, I just did the same thing an octave up. Oh, okay. And that's a lift, right? Yeah. Just the. And that's the same notes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Except I'm actually doing, a, I do this a lot. I, I slur into lots of notes okay. all the time, whether it's a super quick hammer on or a slide. Mm -hmm. I'm doing the, the same thing, slide, hammer on, mm -hmm. but then I'm also hammering onto that. Okay. So it's the same part, it's just an octave up, yeah. and it's all, it's all with how you're, you're voicing it and phrasing it, you know? Like if it were a singer, they're, they might not swoop into everything, but, mm -hmm. but there is some swoop, natural... Woo! <laughs> 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 Bringing the IQ level up around here, all right. Okay, let me play that and then play both parts. Okay. Right. Two, three, four. Cool. So yeah. it sounds like more and more that, that I sit with you guys, it's simplicity wins the day. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, that it's all, you gotta remember that, that you're the help, Yeah. right? Like you are there to be in the background, mm -hmm. you know, you're playing on someone else's record, someone else's song, yeah. someone else is producing, unless you're wearing multiple hats, yeah. you know, unless you're a producer or it's your record or whatever. Yeah. But at the end of the day, like it's it's the service industry. You're like a nice pillow. Just yeah, like, yeah. Just, You're hanging curtains. <laughs> You're hanging curtains. You know, you yeah. didn't build the house. Right. I mean, I don't know. There's so many different ways the analogy can yeah. go, but but you uh, you are there to make a song that is made up of the same chords and maybe even the same progression, the same way the chords move. There, yeah. I mean, I'm sure there's other songs that go. Oh, for sure. You know, yeah. I mean, you're there to help that stand up on its own, to give it its own identity mm -hmm. and uh, set it apart yeah. while still being familiar and have this nostalgia that everybody likes when they listen to music. You no know? pressure. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said last time, it's like, it's a, that's another set of 10,000 hours. Yeah. You know, Just I think knowledge. last time I was saying that, that understanding what each producer means when they say a right. particular, make it vibey. It's like, okay. That, <laughs> like that. Univibe or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, woo, woo, woo. Just, <laughs> just total pitch shift, yeah. Um, okay, so the bridge is just two chords, right? Just C yeah. to D. Yeah. So how do you, do you want to stay in that same kind of thing or do you want to create something different since it's a different section of the song at this point? It's a different section of the song mm -hmm. and so I, I went to a different melody. Okay, and so, so we just did C to D. Yeah. That just hangs over, you know. You what continue. What are you playing? I'm literally playing an octave, G notes, walking down to this sixth that works over a C chord. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's G and E. That's the C chord right there. Yeah. And then, uh, and then I walk that up to the same, same thing over the D. 
And again, I'm sliding always. Mm -hmm. I'm never just striking a note yeah. usually. You know, there's some somewhere in the phrase I'm sliding or hammering Well, that's a lot of emotion to it. Like yeah, feel. exactly. Yeah, because it, you know, you're, you're approximating, I guess you're approximating a vocalist mm -hmm. is kind of how I think of it. Right. And then the second time, it, it, it was something like that. I don't remember exactly. So you're basically outlining a D chord. Yeah, yeah, and then I yeah. land on a D. Yeah. Nice. God, that's so simple, but it sounds so cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, it, it's it's playing really simple stuff with a lot of conviction, and um, you know, people will hear people will hear it, and they'll have the internal response that we were talking about yeah. last time. That's cool. Yeah. I like that. Do yeah. that. Yeah, right. Keep doing what you're doing. Or, man, that's so close. It reminds me of this other thing, and maybe you didn't hear it, some yeah. other song that, that has that melody in it. And it's right. like, ah, we need to Stay get off of that about yeah. 5%, you know? Right. So you change something. <laughs> Just enough to keep the lawyers away. Where, where, do you, where do you start to learn, like, how to do that kind of stuff? Like, what's the... I mean, if we're going to give people a place to start, you know, like, if you like the parts side of guitar... Yeah. Where's like a good records, man? Like, Any... like who? Who are some of your favorite parts guys? Um you know who has really cool parts is uh gosh, there's just so many guys that I work with that I think of that come yeah. up with really cool stuff. But what if you're gonna name like famous bands? Okay. I mean um, some of the people have seen like Kenny and Rob and people here. Sure, sure. But if they want to be able to just go listen to something yeah. and start to get the idea. Man, um, this is going to be a very polarizing answer, I'm sure. But John Mayer. Oh, he is so. His good. guitar parts are. No, you're fantastic. not going to find any Yeah. Trouble here. People like John Mayer. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. He's fantastic. He comes yeah. up with really cool stuff. He, and and people that dog on him, I'm like, how? A, he writes killer lyrics. Yeah. He's a wicked guitar player. Yeah. He tears the strings off on the acoustic. Yeah. And it was just like, come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's the problem here? Yeah. I think I think he would say he's been known to put his foot in his mouth. A couple oh, times. he did. Last concert I was at. He said that exact <laughs> same really? phrase. He's like, first of all, I want to thank you. It was at the Hollywood Bowl. And he had like, I think it was like the closing night of the tour or something. He's like, I want to thank everybody here because I have a horrible habit of sticking my foot in my mouth. And you guys are still here with me. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, he's aware. Yeah. You know what I appreciate about him more than most people in that is he's vocal about it. He just says it. Where a sure. lot of people just, they say that when there's no camera on. Yeah, yeah, he has yeah. No, he has no filter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so John Mayer, that is a good. Yeah, that's a good place. Yeah. And then, um, you know, there's some really great guitar playing on big pop records. There really Dude, is. Dude, Post Malone's latest record. Who's he's. That? He's got some really cool, simple guitar parts that really? are really great. Yeah, I don't, don't listen to it with your kids in the car. Yeah. There's some lyrical, <laughs> <laughs> right, stuff going on. Yeah, but, you know, PG thirteen. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe more than that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know who that is. Is it pop or like what kind of? Yeah, music? yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he's a great singer. Yeah. His records are really well produced, and uh. it's something that you know in Nashville we're we're kind of we kind of hear that and we're like oh. That's cool. Yeah. We bring some of that here. Like, I, I've, I've been on several sessions recently where his yeah. latest record was referenced. Interesting. And, yeah. What are, like, some things that you hear on it? Like, um, it, to give an example. Like, Well, uh, something that's really, uh, like, Kings of Leon-ish. Mm, it's okay. Like, his guitar playing reminds me of some of their stuff. Yeah. Where there's Where there's an open string. I'm going to turn some of the gack off. Uh, where there's an open string playing... Just coming yeah. up with something. Yeah, no, 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 I get it. It's stuff like that. Yeah. Like, that's a part. Yeah. It's singable. There's chords happening through it, even if you're not, you're only hinting at pieces of them with something mm -hmm. droning, you know? Oh, nice. So, so, what kind of music is it? Is it pop or is it like rockish? Yes. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, it's both. Yeah. yeah. Um, Kings of Leon is another one. Okay. Some of their, yeah. their riffs and, and parts are, yeah. are fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, Biggest pedal board you've ever seen in your life. Huh? It's huge. I know, dude. I'm, I was at I was at XES when they were building yeah, it, yeah. and it's like a two person pickup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. So I was just like, yeah. dude. Yeah. 
How do you need yeah. that many pedals when like an H9 and the, what you got can, it seems like it can do it all already. Um, is it a cause you can? I think, I think it's, it's a, uh, it's a matter of picking a bunch of stuff out of a bin for yeah. each song mm -hmm. and then needing that to all be yeah. available throughout the concert. Right. Kind of thing. Yeah. Red Hot Chili Peppers too. He's got Chili one. Peppers. Yeah. Ginormous board. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Lead wise. Cool stuff happened. What's going down? Oh, I'm playing all in the key of G. Okay, so I'm and gonna play. Just start, and you don't have, let's pretend it's uh, this song too, but then also like, hey Justin, just just go for it. Okay. Do your thing. Well, I, it's all, what we did earlier was so off the cuff, I don't yeah. even. Yeah. Well, let's, <laughs> I might go into the, some, some of the same places. Okay. Unintentionally, yeah. but. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. I want to stop you because I don't want you to get too far so you don't forget oh, what you did. <laughs> I've already forgotten. What were, what were some of the things you were doing there? Um, like I said, I'm in G and you know, everybody, yeah. everybody knows that position. Right. But man, I, I like to get, get below it. Oh, so geez. I'm, I'm seeing the G chord here, the D, uh, the E minor, and then I just don't, I don't get, I don't get on that four note very often. I avoid that. Which one's the four? The C. Okay. So even though you're starting on a C, it could, Yeah. you know, you could work it in. I just never do. A lot of times I land on something where there's two notes going and, and I'm kind of always using some kind of vibrato in my mm -hmm. left hand. You can do it with whole chords. So that's all in that, that one yeah. pentatonic. Okay, I'm gonna keep going, keep playing. Shape. Sounds like you do a couple of little two, three notes and then you give it a little, a little space. You let it hang for a minute. Yeah, you're phrasing. Yeah. But like you have a, a cool bounce to your phrase that, phrasing now. Okay. Like how you do it. Well, thanks. Yeah. Um, how do you develop that side of your playing? Right? Because I think the natural tendency is just to fill space for a lot of oh, people. Oh, yeah. Guitar players hate letting a note just yeah. sit there. Right. <laughs> and then the other thing is... Um, it's a cool blend of pentatonic, but like major thrown in there. Sure. But not predictable. See, that's the thing that's, that, that I love about you guys is the phrasing is it's gone beyond predictability, right? It's super melodic. It's, it's bluesy. It's major, but it doesn't sound like, yeah. you know, yeah. you're choosing different notes. Sure. Right. Or hitting them in a different way. Yeah. And it's, it's not the. Exactly. And so that's one of the things I'm. I'm Which is cool. No, it is cool. Um, but that's one of the things that I think a lot of people, they want to move beyond that. Absolutely. And so when I started hearing session guys, I'm like, that. Like, how do you start going there? Yeah. You know, in, in your phrasing. So what kind of, obviously you've been through that bluesy transition yes. or something like it. Yes. What breaks you out of that? I was in abandoned college. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> to start getting you more towards what you're doing now. Man, honestly, it was like boredom at myself, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I just... I'd play the same things, the same licks over and over again. If I wanted to do a flashy part, I had a couple of flashy licks uh, that were all the same as everybody else's. We all listened to too much Stevie Ray Vaughan, right. it seemed like. Yeah. You know? So, um, I don't know. I, I started thinking, like, I, I want to do something different. Yeah. I want to stop. Yeah. I want to breathe. I want to... 
I want there to be phrases, mm -hmm. you know? Like, you think about somebody singing a song, like, they have to take a breath. Yeah. We don't, our fingers don't need to take a breath, but if we internalize and kind of sing along in our head and even breathe through what we're playing, then we're, we stop mm -hmm. to breathe. Yeah. You know, and a lot of times, you know, I'm in, in the middle of a something like that, like I am taking a big breath mm -hmm. in between phrases. Yeah. And it's just, it's time. You yeah. Know? I mean, if you want to, um, if you want to try to get more of that kind of playing under your fingers, learn the vocal melody to your favorite songs. Yeah, for sure. I mean, everybody learns the guitar parts yeah. and the solos and stuff, yeah. but learn learn to play and phrase the vocal melody in a way that, like you're sliding into the note if the singer is sliding mm -hmm. into the note or whatever. It's funny. That's one of my favorite players ever is Neil Sean, but that's what he people always ask him that question. How did you get... How do you play so melodically? And he's like, well, I learned, you know, uh, all the Aretha Franklin vocal lines. And like, and he, had, he came out with an album like, like a few years back that was all him mimicking people's voices on famous songs. You know, like he did a Mariah I've Carey never, tune. I've never heard this. Yeah. And that's how he got so good with his vibrato and his timing. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, I just phrase like a vocalist. So, so for the Mariah Carey part, he starts <laughs> here and ends up. <laughs> with know. a whammy pedal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He but, runs uh, out of frets. <laughs> Well, he's got his Hamer, 38 fret guitar, <laughs> sustainer, you know. No. Um, so, let's do this. Let's play this and stick kind of bluesy-ish phrasing and then break out of, can you do that? Like, so like we were stay, talking about. Stay in the box. Stay in the box. And then go out. Phrase the way you would in the box and yeah. then, yeah. you know, start breaking out of it so people yeah. can start yeah. to see, oh, okay, these are other notes happening just as an aside before we do this we talked last time i think we mentioned david gilmore oh. just kind of playing like he has that great balance of of playing like a guitar player but also like a singer yeah. you know um he's the king he's, dude yeah absolutely yeah i mean just listen to the comfortably numb Ugh. solo and the another brick in the wall yeah and I, I mean all of them are iconic yeah really coming back to life too you heard that yeah one? Division bell, so good. Yeah. All right. Two, three, four. Uh, just a descending. What's well, a slowdown, dog? <laughs> so I'm I'm just kind of going down. Uh... Mm -hmm. And when I do a real quick half step bend, I bend the wrong way a lot. Like down, or what do you mean? Yeah, yeah, like I'll, um. Yeah. I, I go both ways. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Hope your wife knows. On the fretboard. <laughs> on the fret. Yeah. It's not what I meant. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I mean, I'm I'm just I'm playing. In some way, I do when I do it faster. It's different than watching. I do it slower. It's almost it's almost just a, another way to phrase that note. Well, the slides versus pulling off is a definite. It sounds yeah. cool, man. That is not easy either. I mean, do you sit and practice like hitting slid, slid notes like that? Yeah. Well, I mean, the, again, David Gilmore is the first place that I heard that. Mm -hmm. um, what is it? Uh, I don't remember the... Gosh, I'm going to get the yeah. reverb off. And then he does the... Yeah. Yeah. Callous killer. There's, there's a, a 
Yeah, he He's, slides down. Right? Yeah, no. The, yeah. It was like, oh, yeah. what is that? Mm -hmm. Why is that note yeah. cool? Because the whole time before, He's just yeah. in that, and yeah. sorry, I went to that key because yeah. that's what he, he plays it. No, in, no, that's all good. But he hits that that note that's yeah. that's only a whole step above our, you know, our anchor, our mm -hmm. note, our root note of that. So I just started incorporating that yeah. in a lot, and then you do it here. Sorry, I'm back in our other key for what we were playing today. <laughs> And there, like, it's it's the third of the D chord. Yeah. So I'm actually playing a D chord yeah. arpeggio. That was the other thing from Gilmore that I learned. That, that playing, you know, like, I think before him, the natural tendency is always to do stuff like that when he started. Like that kind of stuff, where you're yeah. actually phrasing more like out of a chord. Yeah, he's staying in the chord. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. instead of letting the muscle memory of having gone up and down the scale a yeah, million times a million determine times. Yeah, the music you play. Exactly. He is. That's a good. Hmm, yeah. One more. So, who's your favorite guitar player? If you had to pick one. Gosh, I have to say I've gone through several several phases. Okay, give us the phases. Uh, well, who was the first? Uh, Jimmy Page. Yeah. You know, that's I mean. There's just so much, uh, like, vibe and swagger in his live oh, yeah. playing. Mm -hmm. Even though it was sloppy, it was yeah. like really cool. Yeah, yeah. But then what was what really got me was more so the things he did in the studio. Mm -hmm. Like he innovated so many different ways oh, of yeah. tracking and stacking sure. parts and um, his acoustic playing and alternate tunings mm -hmm. is fantastic. Uh, his slide plane. He's like one of my favorite slide players. Mm -hmm. like extremely vocal, very yeah. slow, intentionally melodic, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and then I went through a Stevie Ray Vaughan phase, like yeah. I feel like everybody does. Everybody does. And then, you know, you, you kind of, when, when you hear a guitar, for me, I would hear a guitar player and wow, that's amazing. And then I'd start reading interviews with him and, and looking up, um, well, back when I was a kid, it was like you had to find a, a concert DVD to mm -hmm. find some interview footage or yeah. whatever. Um, and you'd start hearing them talk about their influences. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, well, then I can go back and see what they yeah. learned off of. Um, and so then naturally, when I when I got to the Stevie Ray, Ray Vaughan phase, that took me back to Hendrix. Yeah, right? oh, dude. And then, you know, his blues record, he plays... So good. It's fantastic. Yeah. And he plays you know, a few different like traditional yeah. styles. And then it's like, okay, so now I'm, I'm gonna go to Chicago and see what that kind of blues mm -hmm. is like. And then the Texas thing, you know, with SRV or whatever. Um, and I went through kind of a jazz phase in college and... Okay, so is that where some of the phrasing might come from? Uh, I don't more... think so. No? I don't think so. I, I... I'm trying to pin it down. Like when I listen to <laughs> my guitar, I like it, but it's like, where does that come from, you know? Yeah. Because I want people to be able to hear because I, I know a lot of people want to transition towards sounding more like that, you know, this kind of a thing. And it's like, sure, obviously you can listen to country radio, but a, a, that's a polarizing genre for a lot of people. Yeah. Well, and any more with the pop stuff, like we, we've distilled so much down melodically that there, the melodies, there's mm -hmm. not very much going on. Yeah, you know? exactly. I don't say that disparagingly. It's, yeah. it's, it's it's how much simple. can you strip back and yeah. give space to and, and still have a cool yeah thing you know, going on cool song mm -hmm. so um after that it was session guys honestly yeah. and that's what got me wanting to do this like looking at the cd booklet yeah you know or the the vinyl record uh cover the back cover or the inside and and seeing seeing familiar names pop up yeah like mike landau yeah. or um steve lukather or paul jackson jr you oh know my God. uh Wait, stop, hold hold the boat right there. If you guys have not seen Paul Jackson Jr. and do not know who that is, do yourself a favor. Absolutely. His rhythm playing, my yeah. lord. Yeah. It's so good. Dude, he's made more money on that than anything. Yeah. <laughs> well, and that he has that one like is it REH DVD or something that he did way back in the day. Um, oh, I'll have to check that out. But it's amazing. Like yeah. it's like, wow, that rhythm playing is just ridiculous. Like that pocket was Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, 
Um, that's funny. We have the same kind of progression. I mean, I'm a huge Van Halen and Neil Sean fan too, but like that's yeah. kind of the same. Yeah. Because we grew up, I think, relatively in the same time when you could hear like Paula Abdul and Dan Huff's playing guitar and it's just some wicked solo. You're just like, what is yeah, yeah, that? Yeah. Or uh, for me, it was Michael Jackson. Yeah. The Beat It solo. Yeah. You know, I mean. Back to Eddie. <laughs> yeah, of course. All goes back to Eddie. <laughs> One take. Yeah. One yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been doing a bunch of that stuff. And that, that's another thing I would do as a guitar player now, go back and listen to the isolated tracks. All that stuff's, you can find a lot of that stuff on its own now and it's just like. Yeah. Somebody was texting me the other day about I'm the one. And you think back to that, you know, that Van Halen song. Yeah. And you listen to it on its own and you're like, hey, that's some of the most wicked guitar playing ever done. But like, sure. how does a 22 year old or whatever he was then 21 yeah, yeah. get that good? Yeah. Not doing anything else. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> totally. <laughs> oh, that's he. I think he yeah. admitted to that. <laughs> um, okay. So back to the... Um, is there, a, is there something, so, so you're basically just saying, you play out of chords more rather than just boxes. Sure. Is what it's breaking down to, yeah. it sounds like. Yeah. Like, I mean, we, we talked last time about having all these rules of landing on chord tones yeah. and you know, playing, um, playing a melody that fits the changes, but then all of that's meant to be broken. Mm -hmm. you know? So really, at this point, I'm just kind of listening ahead and seeing where I want to go. Okay. It just kind of happens... I've gotten to the point now where it just sort of, Happens. what I hear comes out. All right. And there, there are things that I hear re yeah. re repeatedly, you yeah. know? Uh, a different solo might have the same lick or same phrase in it on different records I played or whatever. Sure. Every, everybody's got a thing, mm -hmm. right? Um, I don't know, man. I just from a very early age, I just wanted to sound different. Yeah. So, I don't know. People ask me where I get a lot of this stuff and it's, yeah. honestly, it's like part, I think at least part of it is me just trying to not sound exactly. Yeah. I don't want to be a second rate yeah. Brett. You know, yeah. I don't want to try to do your thing because yeah. you do your thing. Yeah. Um, we all everybody. have influences, but we make it our own. Yeah. My buddy Jeff said the exact same thing. He's like, there's already Jeff Beck. Why do I want to? Like, yeah. I'm never going to be a Jeff Beck. So yeah. Yeah. Just take a little yeah. from that. It's also futile <laughs> to try. <laughs> God, he's so good. Um, okay, so make sure you check out Justin's stuff down below. Subscribe to his channel and my channel if you're new. Welcome, thank you for joining us. Uh, everything's supported by brettpapa.com, so make sure you check that out. Would you like to do a little uh, outro jam? Same kind of thing, but just throw something different? Um, Session sure. guy? Sure, <laughs> why not? Hey, like our last video. No, I didn't like that. It didn't do anything for me. Do something else. <laughs> That's right, yeah. Producer didn't like the solo. Wait, this is the wrong track. This is the right track. That's our last jam. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs>